think she's coming after you for this particular one? Like, like why? Well, I don't know. I think it's a combination of uh, me talking about Lady C's book that she put out and Lady C's article that was out there on, uh, I don't know, one of the one of the papers where Lady C says, bring it on, come after me. I have the proof, sue me about the surrogate children and Doria being in prison. Mm. Right. So I start talking about that on my show and then I have people call in and people comment. And as what I normally do is I just read the comments and go over everything. Right, right. And, you know, it, it's like what she basically can just come after whoever she feels as though she wants to come after for saying anything bad about her. Yet in return, on the other hand, she can she's already been caught and connected to the Sussex squad and this campaign against the royal family to bring down the monarchy, to put a hate campaign against Princess Catherine, right? That's already been established with Christopher Boozy. It's been all over the place, but yet that disappears so quick out of the media. And it's not the first time that's been going on. This has been going on with my family and many other people for many, many years now with the Sussex Squad people. I mean, that little creepy looking guy on Sussex Squad TV, I mean, <laughs> who just sits there with all the little pictures around his face, blah, 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 you know, 24 hours a day. That's all he does. Is, is spread hate and positive things about Megan, Queen Megan, hold on, Queen Megan. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just so wrong that she's that thin skinned that she has to come after me and and claim and then call all, all these newspapers left and right, the ones that are on her paid PR or paid PR firm or whatever, because they are, they're obviously they are, to come after me and my little YouTube channel while I'm sitting down here taking care of my father, her father. Her father exactly. every day for the last two years and my whole thing is is my my husband had, well he had mentioned to me that it was like going viral like all like all the news outlets are talking about your skid and everything and i'm thinking well what's so different about what he's doing now and and what about the things that she's done you know mm -hmm. and so yeah they have she has these people in her pocket and then she can get all this news coverage out there about something you're doing but yet mm -hmm. you know, whole time how she's treated your father where's the outrage about how she's treated her father and the queen i it's yeah. like i don't understand that how can you come out after you for this funny skit i mean come on have fun with it right it's exactly you know and then to, for so so it started with grant hogston right he called okay. me what last week i got a text message from grant hogston and he's back red right okay. Yeah. May as well have tea in the morning with Megan, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. because it's like it's him, it's Carl Larson, it's it's uh, it's Jack Royston for sure. It's it's there's a couple other ones that have just done nothing but say bad things about me and my family since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So when I get this text message, I don't or a phone call. He called me like three times in a row and I didn't answer his call. Actually, dad was with me when he was calling. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm going to ignore it because. Every single time before in the past, nothing ever expires from him except for the bad narrative. So no matter what I say, it doesn't get in the paper. Yeah. And every single time, it's just like, I want control over what I say. And he says, oh, yeah, no problem. No problem, buddy. No problem, buddy. And then it comes out. It's just like, seriously? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, I can't control that. Well, you're the writer. You're the story writer. Of course you can control it. You know? Yeah. Oh, no, the editor does. Right. But anyway, make a long story short, Jack Royston calls about the video I did mm -hmm. and says, we're going to we're going to run a uh, run a story in the Sunday Mirror about the uh, the vile attack on your sister on your YouTube channel. And I mean, I took I took uh, I took his article with my response on it and I posted it on my social media, you know, so people can see that this guy calls and what my response was. And I said, say hi to Megan for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. the reason i know this um is because jack royston has done nothing but say bad things about me and my family from the beginning i mean he is so far up megan's yahoo it's not even funny so mm -hmm. um the story uh, i was looking at it today and it says the headline megan markle's brother says he hurt her says he hurts her that's the headline so and then it says, uh, Meghan Markle's half-brother has a YouTube channel which she uses to troll her. I don't use that to troll her. I use it for comedy, talk about other things. 
And it's not trolling Megan. It's comedy and entertainment. And to take questions, people have a lot of questions. People want to ask you things. Yeah, right? continuously. They questions for you because they know what you, you know, have gone through as a member of her yeah. family. So I think it's legitimate. Yeah. So absolutely. And there's a disclaimer. And like I say on my show every time, it's for entertainment, comedy purposes. Da, 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 da. Read the disclaimer. If you don't like it, watch something else. I say that so often. Right. Nobody is forcing anybody to watch my channel. That's exactly right. Right. If Megan turns on the TV or has the maid do it, um, yeah. if she doesn't like the program, she'll tell the maid to change the channel yeah. <laughs> or, right. or her help or whatever. Because I, I don't know. But then it goes on. Thomas Marco Jr. acknowledged, acknowledged uh, being paid cash tips by followers on his channel after being criticized by a UK lawmaker and British tabloid, The Sunday Mirror. Yeah. So that's what YouTube's kind of for anyway, but I've never hardly even made any money out of YouTube. I mean, I, I worked really hard the last couple months just to see what would generate. Uh -huh. And it's like a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. But that's a hell of a lot of like work every other day for the month. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Of and yeah. to make a few hundred dollars a month, who cares? Right. And why does she care? Why is she putting so much flack on you considering what she has done? It's it's like the audacity. You exactly make money off of living off of the royal family for you. You, you do it now selling jams. You yeah. wouldn't be selling jams as just Meghan Markle. You're no. selling jams because you married into the royal family. Let's just keep it real. So when yeah. people like these reporters come up to you and they want to run these stories, where are the stories that talk about what we know this woman has done clearly because of her connection and how she's making money off of the royal family? It's absurd. Yeah. It's it's called controlling the narrative, right? And people with with tens or twenties or thirties of millions of extra dollars of other people's money that they can spend at their expense, like it belongs to them, do this. Yeah. Because, you know, they pay people in high places, you know, it, it just doesn't happen if you're a nobody. You have to go in there and like, you know, grease everybody under the table if you're gonna get your story out. And then it happens. Mm -hmm. But a, a, a little guy like me, of course not. Nobody nobody will, will ever print what I say. And that's why I've, but it, it's just incredible. All the things that she's done, what it just disappears out of the press the next day yeah it disappears yeah and it's like you're mm -hmm. what you're doing i mean you know you're taking care of her father essentially mm -hmm. you're you're earning modest money and i think you have also a fundraiser we talked about your fundraiser for you know medical expenses or things that you're trying to pay for i mean it's not cheap and i think when you have someone that is so entitled like Megan, who overlooks just basic necessities, you're a cold person. And people that like these reporters should be calling out Megan for her cold heartedness. I mean, where are the opposition to the reports that they're putting out on behalf of Megan? Where is the opposition? Where are the yeah. people putting out reports talking about how Megan is treating her father? You know, yeah. even you know, as a sibling, I mean, not even to acknowledge you, to act like she doesn't know you. I mean, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. You're having fun. You're making light of it. But when you really pull back the curtain, it's really serious. It's really serious what's happening with, with your father and his health and everything. And I, I'm just... I just can't understand the cold heartedness of someone like that and why people don't call it out more. You know, exactly. After you. Well, you, you made a really good point there, okay? My my whole channel for the last two years or a little bit longer since I started it has all, has all been about comedy, making light, and putting a smile back on my dad's face exactly. and boosting his spirits and, and keeping him, you know, in the norm and the reality. And, you know, to be honest with you, it's not easy. Right. I mean, the last two years, I mean, it's, you know, I... People think I'm, I joke around and I just play around all the time. And all I ever do is just, you know, do stupid things on my YouTube channel. But, mm -hmm. you know, this is a serious situation here. You know, I have to, I have to live with the, with the fact that 
you know, at any day this could go south. I just don't know. Nobody knows. Um, and I do the best that I can with little or no money. You know, I've, I've exhausted so many of my own personal resources down here for the last two days, but that's all there is to it. There's nothing else I can do. Cause you know, I am pretty much the only one in the family who can be here and do this. Yeah. Um, so as far as Megan, I mean, she can, you know what she can do as far as I'm concerned. She is just the, the, the most evil calculated evil person I've ever actually had to, uh, displeasure of having to know in my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, for her to, for her to do that and run around the world and run around the globe, like she's some humanitarian and, you know, this total fake facade of a person that she portrays herself to be, you know, you know, with the Invictus games and, and handicapped people in wheelchairs, look at her own sister, <laughs> you know, has she made one phone call to my sister asking her ever, is there anything she could do to make her life better or easier? No. Right. And Samantha lives on a small little fixed income as well, being disabled. And we and, know what the Sussex squad have done to her and the abuse yeah. she's gone through at the head of Megan, right? Yeah. You know, to, to, to not put a stop to the Sussex squad for harassing and giving Samantha death threats, yeah. a handicapped person in a wheelchair death threats to cause her physical harm are you insane i mean what the hell is going on here yeah you know what i mean and and megan has the control over her I, sussex squad people i let have different names for him but mm -hmm. um she hasn't put a stop to it yeah she hasn't done anything and no. people have the nerve to bring up your skit as yeah. being so egregious Let's keep things in perspective, folks. Let's really look at where the egregious behavior is coming from. It's not coming from Thomas Markle Jr. No. It's coming from the sister who is being made fun of as a, as a comedy relief to all the pain that is going on behind the curtain with taking care of this fake humanitarian's father that Megan refuses to acknowledge that exists. Mm -hmm. And it is a really bad time when you can't make that the story, but you make the story about what Thomas Markle is doing out of fun and to put a smile on his dad's faith, face with all the different things that he's doing. I mean, you talk about a, a many other things. So, you know, coming after this one story just shows she can't take a joke. She, she, I mean, I, I would immediately start laughing at myself if someone were making fun of me doing that. I mean, why is this so carefully, uh, you know, looked at as being so bad? Why is this the one that got the attention and not the others? That's the question, right? Yeah. You know, and, you know, I may have dug my heels in a little bit deeper, you know, about a month ago because, you know, my YouTube channel gets hacked. Um, they hack in there. They go after my people who sign up for memberships and they, really? they do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've had so many complaints about their credit cards, even through the GoFundMe, um, you know? So wow. one can only imagine or speculate, allegedly, in my opinion, Christopher Boozy is a computer guy and probably sits there and trains all these guys how to hack computers. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's not me. And it just keeps happening, happening to my Instagram continuously happening everywhere else. And e so many people complain about the same thing. So, you know, and they get mad because what they, they don't want the Markles to have any money. As far as Megan's concerned, I think she wants the Markles to disappear and all just go away and die yeah. and suffer and not have any money, you know, it's weird. It's just like, what's going on with like Lady C saying that Doria was in prison and she has the proof. Go ahead and sue me. Right. This you is know? information coming from Lady C, right? Like this yeah. is, you're taking in and, and the questions are that people, people are giving you, right? So you're reacting off of information that's coming your way. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you, you can't look at this and make any kind of a comment without someone trying to say you're doing something so nefarious. How dare you? And mm -hmm. it's and it's almost like how how can someone that's a, 
that is especially prodding themselves out to be a humanitarian goodwill ambassador to do all these things for people in need. But her own family folks is being overlooked when they don't have the money to do half of what Megan is doing, just throwing money away. And they're being the, the she's trying to make them to be the enemy. Like you said, pure evil. An evil mm -hmm. person does that. An evil person is not caring. I don't care how much you don't like people in your family. You don't promote violence and you don't promote things like what's happening to you and your sister and your father. And she's promoting it, I believe, only because she doesn't say anything against the people that are doing these things. And I just Never. don't know how, how you can get your voice out there in a way that allows people to give you th the right to say what you want to say and to also just allow you to just do what you're doing and just leave you alone. Why yeah. come out and mess with you is, is, yeah. is what I don't understand. Well, Megan, May, Megan being like in, in my, my opinion, the Jim Jones of the Sussex squad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. She could at any time go online and give her commands, just like she tells Good job, squaddies. Your quarterly bonuses are in your are in your accounts. Good job. Keep up the good work. We have those texts. We have those copied. We have the death threats. Oh, your father, be careful. Your father could get a lethal injection. You know, Samantha's death threats. So what, not only do I have to sit, not only am I here, but I have to look over my shoulder also. Right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what- Same with Samantha. It's just, so at any time- she could put an end to this. You know, it just, it just, it, it brings me back to all, a lot of the things that I've read from the Sussex squad and a lot of things they get copied about, you know, and th their initial plan was to overthrow the monarchy because uh, Prince William and Catherine vac vacate immediately. You're on Megan's property. Are you serious? I mean, I don't know, but she hasn't put a stop to it is the point I'm making. Um, and she could. And she could. And, and I think, why don't you just put out the official call to action to your sister right now? Make it official. Officially tell her to do that. Let's do that. Yeah, she won't. You know, because I but, think what it, what, okay, what, what 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 it's okay, really come down to. This, Thomas, that's the only you. that's the only good attention that she gets now is from the Sussex squad. That's why she won't quit because they're the ones who hold her up on a pedestal and call her Queen Megan, right? which is just completely warped and insane in my opinion. But, you know, she, she's got an ice cube chance in hell of ever going back to the UK and being queen. So, <laughs> yeah, that you know, will never happen. That will no, happen. that'll never happen in a million years. So, but yeah, a call to arms, like Megan, put your money where your mouth is. It's like I said it on my show. If there's a so much conspiracy about these children, then prove it, you know, tell everybody to shut up and prove it. Right. If there's a conspiracy about Doria in prison, prove it. I told everybody what happened to Doria right on, on one of my shows because I asked my dad, I go, Dad, what's this about Doria with 10 years in prison from Lady C? Mm -hmm. And he says, no, 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 no. He says, I can't remember her not being available for one birthday. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's six months to a year where she was missing, allegedly. Right. And that's it. So I, I, I put that. I put that fire out. It's not 10 years. So if she did six months or a year, well, then she did six months or a year. But ladies, he has the proof. So. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> so when you do your channel, when you do your uh, your skits, what is it that you think Megan should do or react? What? Because I'm sure you're you know, she's going to probably see it. I mean, I wouldn't imagine that you're trying to be mean in a way that is evil devilish but making fun have you know laugh at yourself honestly i just you know me if i if i look at something on instagram or or social media it just pops into my head mm -hmm. right automatically i see a picture and i already have in two seconds i already know what i'm gonna say <laughs> right. and i can't help it <laughs> so it, right? just, it, it just happens so if I see an article or I see, you know, a scenario, it's just like, bam, I'm going to do the skit. So, mm -hmm. or it's like that morning I did that video. It just popped in my head because of the Lady C thing. And it was just running all over the internet. The right. moon bump, 
the moon bump, the baby bump, the surrogates. It's just, it was everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. So I start my skit out with a, you know, a pillow. You know, <laughs> it's just yeah. because all the videos of her squatting down and the thing folds in half and she stands up and it pops. Yeah. I mean, come on. Right, what's happening? Yeah, so you're making light and fun of something. And like you said, she can dispel all the rumors. It's like it's almost like she has her head in the sand. She doesn't want to acknowledge mm -hmm. things, but she expects other people to just ignore them as well. It's mm -hmm. like, that's not realistic, yeah. is it? Yeah, but, you know, back to your other question about, like, why doesn't she disband the Sussex Squad and tell them to stop mm -hmm. their hate, their yeah. racism? You know, yeah. there's not a racist bone in my family's body. There never right. has been, mm -hmm. you know, she wasn't subject to any, anything in all school growing up. You know, I mean, I was subject, I was subject to racism in Albuquerque, New Mexico in school. I was the only white kid in the whole school. Oh, I got wow. beat up. Yeah. My money stolen almost every day. Yeah. I can you know, imagine. yeah. But you know, it's like, that was then. And this is now. And I've learned that just there's bad people in all races, no matter what. Yeah. That's Every single race has their has their asshole people. Right. And it's you can choose to be that way or not, you know, right. and mm -hmm. yeah. but the Sussex squad have this horrible, horrible race campaign against white people. Yes, they A do. Lot. I mean, the things that that they've called us and it's crazy. It, it's almost like, why why doesn't the mainstream media or the people that want to talk about you and your skill, why don't they pick up the, those stories? Why don't they talk about that? Let's talk about the real hate that's happening and not some little skit that's, you know, you know. Harmless. Fun. Yeah, it's harmless. harmless. It's not. It's not hurtful. Mm. I mean, you can't tell me you're, you're so thin skinned that you can't see that and laugh. I mean, I, yeah. I thought it was funny. And I thought I thought it was funny the way the gal on GB News kept on like cracking up. It was she yeah. really wanted to she really wanted to let loose because, but the guy with the little you know stick up as we were in, he was so like, you know, oh this is horrible and vile. Right, no, that's right, just right. not funny. It's a sick family member. It's like what, you know. You know what? And it's, it's almost like well if you're going to say that's so horrible to me in the same breath you should be like. Well, Megan, what she's done is even it's worse. It's 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 really appalling. I mean, you think about it. You, I mean, mm -hmm. you really put it on the table what Megan has done. And yeah. you can see where the really bad behavior is. And this certainly is not coming from you, where people are mm -hmm. laughing and having fun watching a skit. Something yeah. that's comedy. Because when we stop laughing, when we stop being able to make fun, that's when we die as a democracy, right? That's when things really are going south, when we cannot. First of all, you have to be able to laugh at, at yourself. You have to be able to have freedom of speech. And these are things that I think Megan is constantly trying to suppress, you know, just because their feelings are hurt. Yeah. And I think not putting the truth out there and being truthful in and acknowledging the people that are in your family. Like, let's get back to basics. How can yeah, I mean, be so ignored. I mean, I look at the photos of you with her when she, you were when you guys were younger, but yet this woman acts as if you do not exist in 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 a world where she needs to even acknowledge you when clearly yeah. she needs to. Well, you know, I'll keep this to myself, but she has a lot to be thankful for. She's really lucky she's here. I mean. When I started getting these calls, like after that video, and then I got the email, oh, the other one was uh, Patrick Hill from uh, the Sunday Mirror, right? Mm -hmm. So I go, okay, the Sunday Mirror, the Mirror on Sunday, or the the Daily Mail, GB News, and then the Sun. I'm like, okay, yeah, I know where this is going. <laughs> uh -huh. And they're all the same. Yeah. So they, they, both of those people texted me with the same information, but- had I responded to any of those uh -huh. um, differently than I had, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It would because yeah. the way Patrick Hill or the way uh, Jack Royson, yeah, the way he assumed that he says I don't have any proof. The fact that I that I assume it's Megan say hi to Megan for me. So that really kind of pissed him off, you know. So he went ahead and wrote the story anyway. Uh -huh. But there's nothing I could do anyway. I, I I could I could give him a, a forty page essay and four words will make it in there. Exactly. I hurt Megan. Yeah. I hurt Megan. That's what he puts mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they won't write about the hurt and pain that Megan has caused her own family. No. Like 
that's just no. not even worth mentioning, which I find just, it's like, go shut up, go write mm. the meaningful stories about how this woman has treated her family and, and all that. I mean, just tell us just, what it's like for you, Tom. I can only imagine with your dad and everything. Well, just like you, just like you said before, let's, let's look at like everything that she has done to create all this news yeah. for the last five years, five years. just for instance. Right. Yeah. I didn't create it, yeah. right? She did. She did. Meghan Markle created all this drama that gets brushed away. And it, it's come down to the fact that she obviously has to pay her PR to stick these stories in all these little stupid little dot-com papers that nobody's ever heard of or little online newspapers. You yeah. pay for that. Yeah, yeah. To put out what you want to put out. Like, oh, look, what Meghan Markle wore this. Uh, this. Who cares what you wore today? Right. Nobody cares. Right. Yeah. But they, they really don't. I mean, nobody will cover. It's like, what are they afraid of being sued? If they, if they say something bad about her in, in, in an article or like, you know, why is nobody talking about lady C's? I mean, she's got proof that yeah. should be worldwide headlines right now. Absolutely. 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 So, that should be. But that's not the case. And and no. you make a good point, too, about all the news that she's created. She's done all of this. She's yeah. the one that has created all the drama that we are seeing. And she wants to get uptight about not, you know, about seeing you do a little skit or whatever. It's like, why not just, I mean, if you're going to ignore your family, ignore them when they do things like this as well. I mean, you, she can't mm -hmm. let anything go, can she? She's really no. offended. Yeah. So it, go, it goes back to what you were saying, like, how how am I doing with all this? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I basically I'm the anchor for Samantha. I'm the anchor for my father. Um, I'm and here Megan, every. Let's keep that straight. You're doing the work Megan should be doing as well. You're you're doing things that she's yeah. not even acknowledging and doing because that's her father. Yeah, well, Megan disowned Megan disowned dad a long time ago because she didn't like the ultimatum before the royal wedding where Megan told my father that she has to disown me and Samantha that's if right. my dad wanted to go to the wedding. Yeah. I and you know, right. of course my dad told her to, you know, take a hike. <laughs> yeah, as he should have. It's like that's yeah. that that's the story that Meghan yeah. Markle did not want your father to continue speaking with you and your sister. Like he had to disown you mm -hmm. and Samantha in order for uh, Thomas Markle to even go to the wedding, to even have a relationship with Megan. Mm -hmm. This is what Megan wanted for you and Samantha. Yep. That is your story. Jack yeah. Royston and the other gentleman you said, Phil. Patrick Hill, Patrick Grant Hoxton. Okay. That's yeah. your story. You write about that. Yeah. Right? And then, and the, yeah. And then you remember the creepy shit with Carl Larson? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. after all that, how much time passed since we did that last little thing on, um, on, on that one show? We were all together just, just bagging on him. Because oh, we called, yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, called him out because he was trying to get into dad's house while he was in the hospital with a stroke. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so recalled his bluff on that. So what? I think he texted me about a month ago, mm -hmm. a month ago, just like like nothing happened. Nothing and I'm happened. his friend. But he said uh, he wanted to know something, um, my opinion on something to do with something. Oh, he wanted to know. He goes, he texted me out of the blue and he, he says, Tom, do you know what the domain names are and the dot coms that Megan had uh, filed and registered and owned prior to the wedding? And I just I texted him back. I think it's yeah, I think one of them is www go fuck yourself. Right. So that's what I texted him back. <laughs> because that's the first thing that came to my head when it comes to him, because yeah okay these people they just don't get it i mean yeah. they're they're thick in the head they're as thick in the head as you could get like yeah they don't care because that's their job that's how they make their living but that's okay yeah, you know yeah. There, yeah. there's a special place for all these paparazzis and these and these uh corrupt news people who just print whatever they're paid to say so. Yeah, paid to say. And yet she prances around like she's doing good to help people, kids in hospitals. And mm. meanwhile, you know that you you were told to be disowned 
you yeah. know, by a woman who supposedly cares for these yeah. strangers. It's yeah, I mean that that was weird because you know, and that's that's why I mean it goes way back. That's why I wrote that letter because there was never any problems with us growing up. We had a you know. Yeah. Re yeah. I I moved out when I was not even 18 and that's when they decided I mean um I don't know what Megan was like two years old or something mm -hmm. and they decided to move back to Hollywood and I didn't want to move again because I had made a bunch of friends in the valley it's just it's just so bizarre so we all got together for birthdays and holidays and as everybody knows because I've already said it a million times but nobody ever says that nobody will ever like say right. that Everything was fine. I mean, Doria's family for Thanksgiving, Christmas, some of the best food I've ever had in my life. I mean, I was introduced to sweet potato pie. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> I could just eat the whole pie like pumpkin pie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Doria's gumbo, I mean, it's just an incredible, incredible food. And mm -hmm. a really nice, big, happy family with normal family problems. Right. Yeah. But um, so... In the very beginning, when I was getting chased down, harassed, my life under a microscope, put out in the press, and bad things said about me, a drug addict, alcoholic, a hillbilly, a low life, a convict, mm -hmm. I've been to prison, you know, none of it's true, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, what is happening here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I reached out to the palace through a friend of mine in Oregon, mm -hmm. that response that I got back, distant family, and I don't know those people, from Megan. Wow. Right. That's wow. why I wrote that letter. Hold on. Say say that one more time what her response was. OK, I finally got in contact with the palace through a friend of mine. And the lady's name was Naomi, Naomi Smith, I believe. OK, uh, the, the PR person for Harry and Megan at the palace. Uh -huh. And the email stated, Megan says, distant family. I don't know those people. Distant family. I don't know those people. Yeah. So I don't know okay. those people being me. Like those people, like those people, like, oh, like, like, like Megan calls Harry the other, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. So I, oh my so God. So of course that I sat down and, and, and I wrote a letter and every thing, single thing in that letter, based on what that one sentence to me was, I summed it up. I go, whoa, none of this makes any sense. This is weird. And I didn't even know about the disowning at that point. I found out about the disowning like three years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how did you yeah. officially find out about the disowning? Like, was that what your dad told oh, you? Yeah, me and my dad were talking. I said, I didn't even know that. That's pretty sick. Yeah, because I remember so, when I when I spoke with your dad, he told me that. And I, I couldn't, I was like, that's just horrible. And I'm, I'm almost wondering, why are they not, like, talking about what Megan has said and how she, she doesn't claim that you all as a family? Like... That to me, it, it, it wouldn't be so bad if she wasn't out there trying to prod herself as a humanitarian. You know? Yeah. But I think all, that she's I, trying to do that makes it even worse. I know. I think what's happening here is the fact that what she told Harry in the beginning for her poor me victim campaign um, about I'm an orphan. I was poor growing up. Uh, I was an only child. Uh, people were mean to me and I never had any siblings and what she sold him i don't know i'm going to say something else that that what has happened like when you look up the domains and the trademarks and everything filed years before the royal wedding mm -hmm. it kind of makes you step back and question your sanity yeah why would one person register all these things years before that yes now that's a news story Jack Royston. That's a new story. Yeah. What you know? the meditation around her motives mm -hmm. to do things. But yet she wants to focus on what you've done with the comedy. Skills. Yeah. So none of the siblings or family can come to the wedding. So Doria looks like she's just sitting there by herself in the penalty box playing hockey. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, and had this been different, right? Megan would have been looked upon as a queen. Yes. Right now, yes. had she done things differently, embraced her family instead of lie about them. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird. I mean, even, you know, even with the surrogacy thing, if that is true, the fact, I mean, I don't know how you can't see it any other way with all the video evidence out there. It's just kind of mind boggling. But yeah. she could have been an advocate for surrogacy. Exactly. And built, been held on the highest pedestal. Yep. Mm hmm. Instead yeah. of 
being like looked at like who does that right. who does that <laughs> And this is the thing, Tom, it's like you look at what Catherine has done or gone through with her uncle who has, you know, she's he's an uncle that people say, you know, is a reflection. I don't know if it's a reflection, but they always come back to Catherine when her uncle does something. Catherine embraces her family. It's yeah. almost like you the family is family. She would have been so beloved to just have been a down to earth kind of person. First of all, take a joke, have fun, you know, laugh at yourself, learn to do that. And also, hey, these are my half siblings. You yeah. know, they grew, we grew up together. Well, they were older. They moved out when I was younger, but we kept in touch throughout the years. Just, I mean, if you want to be a person that is, it's, it's, that's loving, that is wants to really, truly help people showing up in Uvalde, going to a birthday celebration. Uh, 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 hold on a second. You don't, you don't show up in Uvalde when your dad's watching you on television from his hospital bed on TV doing that. Yeah. No, you don't. Which was like, oh, let's just drive another stake through his heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in the hospital ill, and yeah. you're visiting people who have had a horrible tragedy ha happen to them, uh -huh. and you don't even acknowledge your sick father. So yeah, me, 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 like and Dad are sitting there. I, I shut the TV off. Oh, because I was I was there with him. Yeah, I was there. Of course, I was there. I was in yeah. Oregon. I turned around and drove straight back twelve hours. Okay. And turned the TV off because who does that? Yeah. Again. Yeah. And and imagine what that makes your father feel like. It's almost like the continual stabbing of your, you know, backstabbing of your father in his ill health, mm -hmm. really making him feel even worse because you're trying to show, because you know he'll see these things. Yeah, absolutely. Not important. These strangers are more important than the one, the man that took care of me, paid for my education. Mm -hmm got me into the career of my dreams, you know, all these things, but yeah, mm -hmm. you, you just throw them away because you're so egotistical and selfish around this wannabe perfect image that disowns people that you think make you not look good. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Nobody has ever, nobody has ever wanted or asked Meghan Markle for a nickel because apparently she only had two to rub together at the scissor salad bar. So yeah. We won't want to take half of her, you know, money. So, right. Yeah. But this goes back to even my dad, like, and then the putting out the false narrative that my dad faked a heart attack, right? I've got a stack of papers, eight inches tall of his medical shit yeah. from the hospital of having stints put in. Yeah. And to not call him even before, like, this is years. Yeah. Yeah. This is six years. Not yeah. one phone call, not one text. How are you doing? Nothing. Wow. All because what? Because you wouldn't disown me and Samantha. Or the family's going to divulge your secrets of your privileged upbringing. You know, which dad worked 70 hours a week for and gave you everything. You never wanted for anything. Ever. Never. Mm -hmm. and, and as soon as she was done with them, she was done with them. What when she you, got on suits, she was done with him. What do you she think, if any, Doria had to do with the way your sister is treating you? I don't know, but there's a lot of uh, similarities there. So Doria kind of kind of uh, hit the big time, I guess, dating my dad. But, I mean, I, I saw it, like, gradually go downhill, and I saw her, you know, just go be Doria, you know, growing up. Because my dad worked a lot. He wasn't, you know, but he made good money, but he worked a lot. And that's the studios. That's the business. You work a lot. The hours. I mean, when I was when I was building sets for the studios, it's 65 hours a week minimum from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Six days a week, not including your drive time <laughs> in right. L.A. So right. you right. kind of have no life. And then when you do go on a vacation weekend or a hiatus or whatever, then you have your own free time back. And then but normally, you no. Know, it's you just don't have yeah so wow. so you know I, I can attest to the fact that doria had her own life going while my dad was working she had Trust her own me. life yeah. yeah i'm gonna put that i'm gonna put that on paper so yeah yeah and a lot of other things as well
So mm-hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let some, some person with mental problems bully me and tell me what to do. Right. Tell me what to say. Not going to happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You live your life. You do you because Megan's thinking only about herself and, and it's like, she wants to gain all these things of this world, all these things around money and celebrity, but she can't go back to the things that are just free and basic in just your grounding, where you come from. I mean, can you really trust a person who doesn't want to acknowledge where they came from? Exactly. Can you trust a person who doesn't want to acknowledge where it all began and as if it never existed? Yeah. Well, you know, this I, I didn't really sleep last night because I, I, I just was tossing and turning and going crazy because uh, I put a bid in on the 49th number j- jar of jelly just so I could get it and because it might be worth something someday. So Okay. Just, <laughs> yeah, like those are the important things, right? Yeah. 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 But not not the you know, the relationships of the people that you should, you know, really have a relationship with. I'm I'm sure you yeah. and your sister Samantha loved Megan as much as you could as kids do, you know. You you I mean she was your sister. Yeah, was a, there was a fifteen year age difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. So of course I have my own life. Of course I'm like got my own life in in in, in the San Fernando Valley, yeah. uh, running my business, doing my own thing, you know. And but yeah, it was kind of like mandatory with Dad to get together for birthdays and holidays. So that's what we did. But yeah. Yeah. you know, I was with you know she was like I was 15 when she was born. I moved out when I was 17 and a half. But you saw her throughout know. your whole life through your throughout her growing up at family yeah. get togethers. Absolutely, yeah. You know, yeah. went to so many of her school plays at all our private schools, you know, where it costs more than two nickels to go there. Um mm-hmm. and it, yeah, I mean, you know, we never we never had any problems. We were just, you know, she was just a little happy go lucky little kid doing her own thing, being the center of attention on every stage you know at every place she did yeah and maybe that's what it was maybe that got went way to her head you know what i think that's what it was and she's been like so high up in that big ego of her since she was a little girl and it can it must just stab you in the heart for her to say she doesn't know who you are like yeah really well now it it, it doesn't bother me now <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but back then i it was like it was just Something like I wasn't expecting to hear that. Like, excuse me. I said, <laughs> all I want, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't ask for anything. The only thing I asked for was I said, the palace or Megan, this is your responsibility. Yeah. This is your life. This is not my life. Get these people off my back. That's all I care about. Right. You tell the press to leave me alone. Yeah. You can do that. You guys have the power to do it. It's not my responsibility. Right. It's yours, Megan. And that's and what I got back on the press at all. No, that, that pissed me off. Okay. Yeah. You no. Know? So it was almost like she wanted the vultures, the people to come after you and to harass you and you weren't equipped to deal with all of it. And no. It just, just like the palace right wanting to send help for my father twice. And she told them no. And you know, she said on Oprah that she said she, see, this is the thing. She lied and said on Oprah that she sent help for your dad. No, no, she did it. No. Wow. It's like my dad was uh, invited, uh, I think, uh, to the coronation or something also. And she said no. He was Uh, invited to the coronation? King King Charles or something. um, something, Something with the queen. I forget what it was. Twice, two, two occasions. She was asked if uh, if she wanted her father to come, and she said no. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thomas, that just must be. <sighs> it's it's bizarre. You know, I don't I, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't understand. I've been reading a lot about narcissists, <laughs> but I may as well just open up the Megan book. <laughs> it's the same yeah. book, I think. You I know, think making this, different. making that, making this, making that. It's just, I don't. I've never seen somebody so full of full of their self in my entire life. And it, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's okay. I wish she would just change her name. She's embarrassing me. She's embarrassing my family at her actions and the way she 
you know, gallivants through life pretending to be this person that she's not, that she never will be. She's never going to be a princess. She never was a princess. She never will be a princess. She's never going to be a queen ever, you know, but she is the queen of the Sussex squad. So at least give her that. Yeah. Wow. Well, Thomas, I am just so sorry that you had to be beat up around something that was so funny and you have a sister that has treated you and most importantly, your father, the way she has, I just, I think that should be the story. That should be what people acknowledge because what you're yeah. doing is having fun and the story, the real story is what we just talked about. That's the real story that people need to be talking about when it comes to Megan. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have it easy here and they think I'm, raking in all this money. I mean, people give me five bucks, 10 bucks, tips, like $50 in tips. Who cares? It's not the point about the $50, right? Yeah. It's just, and YouTube doesn't pay you that much. You're totally aware of that. Yes. Right. You have to rack up 5 million views if you want to make any kind of money in a month, right. which is damn Millions. near impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, so for her to get the sun, the sun, the mirror on Sunday, uh, Newsweek, GB News, and the other one to come after me to say bad things about me, all one sided, by the way. Yeah. Vile, vicious, horrific, gross, disgusting attack on a sister. Right. That's the way they were paid to see it and say it. Exactly. But That's at exactly. least the, at least the lady on GB News got a little snicker out of it. So, yeah, right. Because she probably I knows what. Yeah. Huh? And I beg people to just in replace of what you did, think about all the things and the things that Megan continues to do as being all those things you just listed. Vile, yeah. you know, disgusting, yeah. all these things. These are the words that describe Megan's behavior towards her father, her half siblings, things that she's continuing to do as we speak, because she continues to show support for people she doesn't even know but yet wants to erase people that were in her life from the very beginning and her own. You know, life. exactly. I have thousands and thousands of comments from so many people. Gosh, I wish I had a, a brother like you. Gosh, I wish I had a dad like you. Gosh, I, you and Samantha seem so great. Megan really screwed up. Megan and Harry screwed up by what are they thinking by not having a, a cool family like you? People would give their left arm to have a family like you. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. so and I'm glad the way things have turned around over the last few years about the portrayal about the Markles, because everybody know, knows that, yes, we're just a normal, cool family with problems like every other family in the world. Right. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But it's turned around. It was bad in the beginning, but now it's better. And yeah, last last thing I want to say is like, yeah, it's not easy for me here. Yeah. I, I'm making the best of my situation and doing the best I can. For what it is you know it's it's continuous stress and yeah i mean i've been here every single day for my father the day that he had a stroke i was here the next day after a 13-hour drive wow. so yeah. and i've been here every every day for him since and not one phone call not one text not one anything nothing from from his daughter that he gave everything to that is lucky to be here because of my father exactly. by the way and it's so. such a tragedy, Thomas. It's such a tragedy. I, I just, I'm just so mm -hmm. hurt by it all. I really am. I feel for your dad and how much he loved his daughter, and for her to do this to him now is just, to me, just it's an abomination. It's the lowest of the low, and you, you writers have the nerve to write a story about that but you don't acknowledge the horrific mm -hmm. things this woman has done to her, her father and the mm -hmm. sacrifice that you are doing for her father, the sacrifice that you have right now to help mm -hmm. your dad. Cause it's not easy. And I can imagine mm -hmm. a lot of the comedy comes out of a lot of pain from you. They say comedy comes from pain. And, and I think uh, I'd, ra I'd, ra I'd rather and laugh than cry. You know, I'd rather laugh than be in a bad exactly. mood. I'd rather laugh than cry. So, yeah, than cry because I can only you know. imagine how it's just a lot to have to go through when you don't have that support 
you know, you know, your sister's running around in private jets and living in mansions and, you know, faking and wearing all these designer clothes, but yet it's a real struggle for you to do what you're doing. And, you know, I, I I'm going to leave a link in the description for anybody that wants to support you and your dad, because yeah. I think that's where the support should go. And I think the support Megan's trying to get for her little nonsense, her, what Harry are doing is just laughable. Let's keep well, I mean, you know, if it, if it gets really bad for me, I'll sell my used clothes on eBay too. Yeah. Start oh. doing, say, Hey, I'll help you. I, I help my charity do that as well. We have an eBay <laughs> store, you know? So yeah, we're, we're going to keep the stories where it needs to be on yeah. the work that you're doing on behalf of your father and, and keeping out all the things that Megan has done that has been despicable. That's where you need to be focusing on. I can't see yeah. that. Enough. That's, that's, Give us a break with these stories around what we did, you know. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> Thanks so yeah. much for meeting yeah. with me and tell your dad hello. Tell yes, him I will. Yeah. Okay. He speaks very, very highly. Yeah, I will. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good one, Tom. Bye. Bye-bye.